Hello. My name is Lemony Snicket. Got a uh, Netflix series coming out on uh, Netflix. It's kind of a series of unfortunate events. It's a book series that I wrote. And then Patrick Warburton he acted as me in the TV show. So, figured that. Uh, I might read you some excerpts from the book with, uh, with me, Patrick Wilbur, let me stick it. Dear reader, if you have not read anything about the Butler Orphans, then before you read even one more sentence, you should know this. Violet, Klaus, and Sonny are kind-hearted quick-witted, but, uh, their lives, I'm sorry to say, are filled with bad luck and misery. All the stories about these three children are unhappy and, uh, wretched. And the one you're holding may be the worst of them all. If you haven't got stomach for a story that includes a hurricane, signaling device, hungry leeches, cold cucumber soup, a horrible villain and a doll named Pe Pretty Penny. And this book will probably fill you with despair. I will continue to read these tragic tales, for that is what I do. You, however, should decide to yourself whether you can possibly endure this miserable story. With all due respect, let me stick it. Chapter 1. You didn't know much about little orphans, and you saw them sitting on their suitcases at Damocles Dock. You might think they were bound for an exciting adventure. After all, the three children just disembarked from a fickle fairy, which had driven them across Lake Lacrimos to live with their Aunt Josephine. They would not be exciting and memorable, like having your fortune told, or going to a rodeo. No, their adventure would be exciting and memorable like, uh, being chased by a werewolf through a field of thorny bushes at midnight with nobody around to help you. If you're interested in reading a story filled with thrilling the good times, I'm sorry to inform you, but, uh, you must let me read the wrong book. Chapter 3. There is a way of looking at life called keeping things in perspective. This simply means uh, making yourself better by comparing the things that are happening in the year right now against other things that have happened at a different time or to different people. For instance, if you were upset by a ugly pimple on the end of your nose, you might try to feel better by keeping your pimple in perspective. You might compare your pimple situation to that of someone who's been eaten by a bear. And uh, when you look in the mirror at your uh, ugly pimple, you can say to yourself, Whoa! At least I'm not being eaten by a bear! Count old life clamped one hand to his face, as if Aunt Josephine had just told him she was the tooth fairy. Cannot believe it, he said. Madam, you don't look nearly old enough to be anyone's daughter. And Josephine blushed again. Well, sir, I have been by the lake my whole life. Some people have told me that it keeps me looking youthful. See? Very young face. People never mistake me for 35 and married. Never. Ever mistake me for that. Ever! Chapter 4! That night, the boat of children out of the table with uh, Aunt Josephine. They ate their dinner with a cold pit in their stomachs. Half the pit came from the chilled lime stew that Aunt Josephine had prepared. But the other half, if not more than half, came from the knowledge that Count Olaf was in their lines once again. He's not Captain Sham. He's Count Olaf in disguise. Chapter 6! <clears throat> Mr. Pelfrand sat down at the table, 
took out his handkerchief. Forgery, he repeated. Little orphans had shown their shattered window in the library. They'd shown them the note that had been thumbtacked at the door. And they'd shown him the business card with a grammatical mistake in it. Forgery's a very serious charge, he said sternly. And blew his nose. Where's the funny bits? Oh, I ran somewhere. Chapter 12! You wouldn't say. Josephine Ant Whistle had been thrown overboard to the leeches. Because that would be incorrect. Who have you said? Josephine Ant Whistle has been thrown overboard to the leeches. That'll be alright with you. Yes, Aunt Josephine said. I mean, no, I mean, but Aunt Josephine never got what to, never got to say what she meant. Captain Sham faced her and, using both hands, pushed her over the side of the boat. A little gasp and a big splash. She fell into the waters of Lake Lacrimos. She's probably dead. Chapter 13! Mr. Poe looked astonished. Well, it relieved. Klaus looked a sausage. A sausage. A S S U A G E D. A sausage. Klaus looked a sausage. I'm not sure that the Baudelaire's had each other is the moral of the story. But to the three siblings, it was enough. To have each other in the midst of their unfortunate lives. But like having a sailboat in the middle of a hurricane. And the boat like orphans. This felt very fortunate indeed. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not crying because the story's over. That's the end of the video. Good work, you made it. Um, I keep forgetting every time at the end of videos, or at the start of videos, or any time in videos, to like thank people for subscribing because, well, I was gonna do like a. 300 subscriber like special then a 500 <laughs> and then like a 600 I was gonna do one every hundred but it just like it would climb so fast that by the time I had an idea for something fun to do it was already completely pointless and you know outdated so I think I just save the specials for when things slow down <laughs> until then thanks this is awesome I, I like looking at the subscriber count go up every single day I know it's mostly for the voice videos, so that's why I'm going to keep doing them, but if you want to check out the other videos, they're fun too, just so you know. They're really good. Believe me.